Hey, you guys, welcome to another episode of Grinding Jacob's Gears. I'm your host, Jacob Willis, and today I have an amazing guest, bitch. I'm so excited. Her. We got Horrible Decisions, a store. Not decisions. You know, black people horrible love episodes of shit that is not there. We got Fuse, okay, Sex Sales, two seasons. Oh, you wanna do some more company? Oh, yeah, we can keep going. Okay. Okay. And then we also got. She was just written in a wonderful magazine. Congratulations. Oh, is it M I Mick? M I C? Mandy hates that one. So let's talk about my Huffington Post article instead. Okay, so we can talk about Huffington. <laughs> Congratulations on Huffington Post, the uh, female you. Tyler Perry in podcast. Okay. Yeah. I really like that article. Also, when she put secret nigga meetings in there, it was crazy because I was like, damn, I kind of thought that was some shit we said on the phone. But that's a real good like interviewer and a really good journalist. They like pull shit out of you. The secret nigga, like I was so laughing about that because you create spaces for African-American people um, to come and work. And that's really big. That's some boss type shit. Like, everybody up in here is black. Everybody I met so far has been black. I know you and got you a couple of white races. I, but... do, I, <laughs> I know you got some light skins. And, uh, you got a couple of light skins. Listen, we needed someone who's speaking Spanish, who's Clarita, okay? <laughs> Cause I said, damn, in LA, what we gonna do? And you know, I fortunately I haven't met any Mexicans yet. So we brought Claire in, who's from España. But hey, you know, it, it fits the bill. But uh, no, I was gonna say, even with you just saying that, like giving black people jobs, like the fact that we just opened LA, like I just can't wait till they get more jobs and more podcasts in here. So, you know, I feel almost guilty, even though they have a job, it's like maybe not full-time capacity yet. Like I always want more, like I'm super thirsty. I've been in, as you should, though, you should want more because I'm never satisfied either. Like, even when I do certain things or reach certain goals, I'd be like, okay, cool. My friends be like, enjoy the moment. But I'm just like, no, that's not it. I want to keep going, go going. Yeah. And I've been, try I've been trying to do this podcast thing for a while because I used to have a successful podcast, but, you know, we broke up like the Beyonce group. Okay. It was definitely <laughs> giving Destiny Child. Everybody went the wrong way. And... This is the best studio, you guys. If you are a oh, podcaster you. and you guys want to start a great podcast of great value and you guys, you know, save up a cute little Not point. great value. That's Walmart. Okay, let's do extravagant, top Ooh. tier, above average, never basic, the one, never the two. Top tier, top notch. Better. That's what you're going to get. He was giving a rollback. I was giving a rollback. I said, let me correct. With, with this um, <laughs> WTF Studios and Hollywood, you guys, please come and check it out. It's a great space. This is so, this is giving, I got me my own talk show. Right? Like, I'm like, what lights can It's the box lights. <laughs> I love the box lights. Like, everything here is quality. So thank you for opening you. up the studio yeah. in LA. They have a location in New York, too. Yeah, so check out the website. I'm going to link it down <laughs> in the description box. Thanks so much. I was looking on the internet, and Lil Nas X, he was at his show the other day. Mm -hmm. And there were people outside, you know, um, talking about homophobia, like how they don't like gay people, how we're going to hell, and all that. What show? Um, he just did a show the out fashion of- Fashion Week shit? No, like a performance, a concert. Uh -oh. And they basically threw things, right? He went and bought them all pizza, brought it to them. He tried to, you know, be the, the bigger person, brought them all pizza, and they denied the pizza. Not them denying the pizza. They denied the pizza. He did all of that. This and they dick denied sucking the pizza. pizza. Right. <laughs> Girl, they didn't want the pizza or him. So I'm like, wow. So when you try to be the bigger person, and this is what I hate. They always get on celebrities and people in the industry for, you know, being violent and all those things. But as soon as they turn things around and try to do a positive gesture, then it's not yeah. respected. I just hate that. I think the thing with Lil Nas X, too, is like, you got so much, not only is he gay, but he's also someone that's towing the line. And he's the epitome of trolling, right? That video, which is one of my favorites, what is it, Call Me By Your Name, when he slid yes. down the pole to hill? Oh, my God. It's kind of weird, too, because to me, like, I don't know, maybe I'm not into white news like that, but, like, I feel like I've seen so much satanic and sadistic shit with white people and rock bands. Like, are they doing this because he's a nigga? Well, let's or... not forget about the shoe. Oh, the blood shoe? Yeah, the blood shoe. Well, get on Megan Fox then. But I think that's when it started for him, like when people started to like hate him. But it's what black people, we're gonna get, we're gonna get the most hate because we're black. But the Megan Fox shit, bro. Get yeah. on them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Lil Nas is a fucking kid. And all y'all love his songs. Everybody be singing them songs, black, white, Puerto Rican. Whose blood was it in the shoe? I, girl, I guess Satan's. I don't know, child. <laughs> Shit. See, that's kind of fun. It is fun. I mean, I wouldn't have water shoes, but I mean, I wasn't like, you know, in this comments dragging. I'm like, do you? That's your shit. That's your life. I'm not into blood play, like, but I know some people that are, but like at the same time, if someone gifted me some little Nas X blood shoes, I might be like, okay, for a little thing. I know what for you a little into, razzle though, bitch. I know what you into. And I was yeah. so happy because I love to lick, okay? I was watching the last episode. Oh, I was talking Harvard about licking? Yes, you were talking about licking. I'm the same way. Like, it turns me on. I love to lick a man, his 
feet from the top of his to the soles of his feet, you darling. You like your feet? Baby, everything. Okay. I love to lick. I didn't say that. Right. Well, I did. <laughs> I'm not you judging, I'm, bitch. I don't have pearls. No, no, no. I'm just talking shit. I don't know why I can't get into feet. You know what? None of my friends like feet. So we play Never Have I Ever all the time, and they know what to get me. I always lose that one. It's like I have a foot fetish. Four men with like nice, long, beautiful feet. Do you like, like staircase toes? Do you like the long one and the skinny one at the top? Like, what's your foot that you fuck? Bitch, we can climb to the mountaintops. Would you fuck a foot? I have fucked a foot before. Did he do this with him? Yes. I got I, I foot fucked before. Oh. And I licked his toes like a it was, third hole like for it was, them. Huh? Yeah, it was definitely a third hole. I licked it like it was like a rib, barbecue soft, right out the slap. Would you put anything on it? Um, if you wanted me to. I mean, I'll do a little whipped cream on it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Wait, you said like a slap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right off the bone. I don't know why I can't get into feet, but like niggas really want to fuck my feet. And when that shit... You be- have nice feet. Oh, wait, stop, stop, stop. They're chipped and they a little dry right oh, now. Oh my God. Why do you females do that? Y'all get on my nerve. Anytime I compliment a female <laughs> on her or on her toes, they're always like, oh, they need to be done. They- Girl, they still look good. Okay, thank you. They still suckable, lickable. <laughs> I mean, I probably want to lick them a second, but you know. But you know, though, I don't know what it is. Like, we always do this thing on Horrible where we say eat ass or suck toes. I always say eat ass because I feel like the ass be cleaner. So would you eat a man's ass? Have you, have, you done yeah. it before, actually? I don't know why I'm asking. It's not my favorite thing, but I'll order it from time to time. You order from time to time? Just because, like, you got to get niggas so ready. Like, you have to understand, straight dudes are disgusting with their hygiene. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. They just have no regard for their bodies. And so that's the problem. Like, And I think what what is funny is sometimes you'll hear like people shade gay niggas for doing some wild shit and be like, bro, all they do is fuck around with their ass. So hello, of course they're getting that's it right. Keep. Fleet, just everything. Not eating, fiber, like it's so much. So, you know what we go through and put our bodies through just to buy them at the end of the that's day. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, anyway. I haven't even yet eaten yet today. Do you have plans later? Listen, I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe a little Craig's moment. I don't know what we're going to do today. Oh, is that why you're not eating? Well. <laughs> the stress. I didn't say you did, but <laughs> nevertheless. Okay, tell me what's on your little docket. I see Okay, you. so let me tell you this little docket. So I was on a neighborhood talk. You know, Kyle Anthony. Love you, baby. Um, we're talking about Armarion, okay? He says he didn't used to warm women, that he was uncircumcised. So basically, you know, they would just do their thing. He would put on his pants and, you know, the turtleneck would be there. Now, I'm uncircumcised, but baby, he up cleans. And I love my uncircumcised. Are you from the islands? No, I do have Filipino in my blood, though. I, but I don't think that has nothing to do I with it. I think love my love uncircumcised D. Girl, I, and it feels so good when I'm stroking it. Like, when I masturbate, it's like I have a fucking glove on, bitch. All of that <laughs> wetness comes out. You would think I've already came. So, Overflow. It's interesting that, like, he said that he doesn't warn women about it. So, someone I had sex with once told me and he had a big old little uncircumcised D. Not big old little. But I remember he said, like, yo, like... You might be the first person that was like overexcited to see that I was uncircumcised. He was like, as a grown ass man in my 40s, I still am apprehensive about what women will think when I pull my. But you be happy to see any kind of dick. I don't even think it's uncircumcised. That's true. I saw your little Jesus piece. Okay, wait, let me explain. Y'all take a look at this clip. No. Because this is how excited I get. And I think I've had a lot of reaction from dudes (laughs) about how excited I get about dicks. When I unzip and I see it's big, I just be like, (laughs) <laughs> oh my god! I get so happy, and I be yes. telling them, I be like, "Yo, I can't believe how long you waited for me to fuck you when you knew you had this big ass dick." Okay. <laughs> so the uncircumcised dick obviously has more nerve endings. You feel more, yeah. and so as someone that like I love to give head, I just noticed when men are cir- uncircumcised, they don't come as hard. They don't have as hard of a reaction. It's just like I don't know. The orgasm is different. So I feel like. For uncircumcised men, the fact that you can experience more pleasure is more pleasurable to me. That's true. You know what I mean? It, yeah, it, it gives me great pleasure. Like, I just I just love it. Like, if I can go back and be, like, a little toddler again, I'd be like, I would ask my parents to keep my dick uncircumcised. <laughs> I, mean, it, I, don't, I don't like, I mean, I it just, maybe because I'm used to it and I was born this way, that's why I'm probably... I like what were the comments for Omari on that? What were people saying? People were like, oh, a bitch, I would have walked out the room. He should have warned. They were saying that he should have warned... You hoes that his dick was uncircumcised. Y'all want the dick anyway, regardless if it's circumcised or not. Y'all want to be able to say y'all fucked tomorrow, y'all. So just stop there. The other weird thing to me, too, is like, of course, those are the type of bitches to do that. Because not that I'm not on the neighborhood talk or the shade room or all these blog sites. But or every- a fuse or... No, no, no. I mean the sites. 
Anytime I'm on them sites and I want to talk shit about somebody, I'm like, send it in a fucking group message or group chat like a real normal person. Who right. the fuck talks shit about people in comments like for real in real life about their bodies or their looks? No! Do it in private like a normal person. Like Erica Banks thought she was doing. Let's talk about that bitch because Erica Banks really, really, really tried it. Now you have to look a certain part just to hang out, go to um, the club with. Let's give an audition. I will be honest. I do think she's attractive, but... Not attractive enough for those comments. <laughs> like, she's a pretty girl, but like, yeah. damn, bitch, you would have thought, like... It's not giving 10 across the board. It's not. It's not it was never giving 10 across the board. And, and the board. I'm not talking about... Like, I'm just saying, I think that a lot of girls have the internet fucked up. Like, sometimes we can live so much for social media that you don't even realize what you're saying isn't even real. She said, I like the look of things to the point where, like, you say you got to be with a girl who's thick. Okay, so your old body couldn't have gotten in the club? Like, technically, you got a BBL, so what do you Hello. mean? I don't know. There's just so many beautiful women, all shapes and sizes. And I was saying this on it's on a Patreon episode of Horrible, but I was like, one of my homegirls is like maybe like 250 pounds. And she's super fly. She's a stylist. Be dressing right, looking good. And Mandy had said to me like, well, you know that sometimes if you go out with her in New York and meatpacking, like she can't get into shit. And I was like... Yes, this is true. Maybe we will go up to a fucking club door and maybe somebody's going to, you know, say no because she's not conventionally the type they want in the club. But that's why I have access now. Okay? Like, Come that's on. why I'm Thank able to you, buy Lord. bottles now because I want to fucking do what I want. Yeah. Whether even even means bringing my gay niggas in the club. Come on now. Because that's another thing, too. If I want to go to, a, like, a club, a lot of the times my gay friends can't, can't come in with me if they're men or if niggas invite me, I can't bring dudes. So I say that to say... For Erica Banks to be a rapper that has money and access and you to still act like that is kind of nuts to me. Like, I can understand girls that are, like, thirsting to, like, meet niggas and shit like that. Maybe you need to have a type of girl with you so you could trick. But, like, what are you even saying, bro? She could, she said verbatim, you could be the sweetest girl in the world, but you're not coming to the club with me. Yeah, I just don't get it. You know, but we just had to discuss this because that irritated the hell. That irritated me and my homegirls. It was just... So, <laughs> Erica, you sit at home and you think about what you said. On to with the your bad bitch homegirls. Oh, my God. Also, go ahead. She talked about the dressing, and not saying that she can't dress. Okay, but I'm just saying Fashion Nova sponsors, and we love Fashion Nova, right? Right, but the it's not really giving anything. Get you some gray area. Get you some gray area. You couldn't wait to show. Okay, get you some gray area. But that's the thing, though. It's mm -hmm. like you know, I think that we also have fashion fucked up. Like girls thinking they can dress from a two piece set you clicked online with. Like that took no effort. And I'm not saying I'm wearing the fucking most amazing outfit today, but what I do know you is can like get in a club in LA dressed like this. That's true. You can. I'm wearing these wedges because I was like by the beach. But no, like I, I do think girls sometimes can't think beyond their realm. Like, she thinks she can dress because she lives in Fashion Nova land, right? You think about Fashion Week, how many alternative looks we saw and how many people talk shit about them, how many people thought Doja Cat looked nuts. Like, that avant-garde shit is fashion. You know what I mean? It's creative. It's explorative. So, like, bitch, you really put nothing into this. Right. That's why what you got to watch what you say. You can have all these sponsorship deals and then you rub somebody wrong way in Fashion Nova. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> You're canceled, darling. So I don't know if you wanted a cookie, a diploma, a round of applause, or congratulations, but you're not getting that from me. On to the next, darling. Let's talk about getting to clubs in L.A. Because okay. the gay men, okay, we are known for having the baddest bitches. Like, I got the That's baddest true. females as friends. And when we go to the club, they be like, come, come to the front, right? But I feel like when you're a man... Even if you're a straight or heterosexual guy, when you go to the clubs, if you don't have no bitches, which you got to pay the hundred dollars, you know you got to pay money to get right. To the you club. do have to have girls with you. That's true. I I I, I got to be honest though. Here's why I understand that. Uh, historically speaking, who buys bottles and tables when he goes in the club? Men. Men yeah. What do they want to see when they go in the club? Women. I get it. But there's something I've learned a little bit about L.A. and New York clubs that I kind of gotta say I appreciate. New York is more about style than it is about physical attributes. I agree. Like, so I bring that up because my homegirl who's fat, by the way, I didn't know you could say fat until, like, we interviewed a fat girl. She was like, stop saying big, bone, BB, like, just say fat. I was like, oh, okay. So my homegirl's fat, but like I said, she's a stylist, she's fly shit. Like, she had said recently to me, why do niggas act like I'm not going to get in a club? Look at me, girl. Like, I'm like, what are these girls doing that I'm not doing? Like, I am the shit. 
And she has that attitude and walks in everywhere and gets in everywhere. Not even because they may know who she is, but because she is fly. And I think LA doesn't give that. They I really do want the Kim Kardashian same looking girl. Yeah, it's just so annoying. But that's one thing I love in New York about New York because it's real. Like you say, um, LA is so superficial and it's so irritating. I, I see time and time again people getting declined from clubs. I've seen it multiple times. And even recently, I went to a club um, about three weeks ago and I had on pants and I had on a, some sneakers and I did have on like this shirt. Okay, right. I was very casual. But it wasn't that type of club where like there was like bad bitches and it was it was very like a it was a very much what was it? casual ass club. It was like a, around the corner. I forgot the name of the club. Davy Wayne's. No, it wasn't. I know good days at Davy Wayne's, baby. It wasn't Davy Wayne's. Cause oh. I get in there. This club, the guy was like, Oh, you have on casual clothes, you can't get in, right? I said, Okay, like, okay, I've never been there. I gotta respect the rules. Then I look in the front, there's a white boy and a Hispanic guy, and they both are even more casual than me. I mean, at least I'm casual and the designer looking okay. They're casual and it's giving like we just left Target. He let them in. I said, Okay, so why did you let them in? And then I'm dressed like this. He was like, Oh, well, they probably have a table. I said, Okay, I'll buy a table, let me in. He was like, oh, you got to go talk to him. So I went and talked to this other guy. And I'm like, yo, like, he just let two guys in that were dressed mad casual. He told me I can't get in because I'm dressed regular. He said, I got to get a table. I said, I'll get a table. So can I get in? He was like, you can't get in dressed like that. You have to have a collar shirt. I said, what about them? He said, they were already on the list. I said, okay, I got you. Get the fuck out of here. Right. Baby, I had, I made a whole scene, but I ended up leaving. Um, and then I made sure to get that, get it. You never know who you're talking to. And these are the, these are the things about the businesses. And I'm not one of those people that want to get people's businesses taken away from them because that's not me. I have a business. I have a sunglass line, right? It's more so about the principle. Treat people how you want to be treated. If people are coming to your establishment and they're willing to spend the money and you're going to let other people in that are dressed casual, let me in as well. Do you know how many ugly niggas invite me to their table every time I go out? Every time. Come on. God damn, they ugly. And I go up there and get my drink. But the point is, they be <laughs> ugly. And I just really don't understand, like, what the fuck are you talking about? That was the funny thing about Erica Banks. Do you know, and I really believe this, if she made a video and said, I ain't taking no ugly bitches to the club with me, we would have laughed. It was something about the way she said, it has to be a certain type. You can't be this. You can't be skinny. You can't look like this. You can't have this. And it was like, woo, you got a lot of requirements for Audition, that face. bitch. Don't like that. It was a whole audition. Like, you got to literally pass this test in order to sit with me. Or you can't sit with us. But you're not even... And nobody want to sit with you, hoe. I'm going to be real with you. I did do the busted challenge, but if I Everybody passed, did the busted challenge. If I passed her in the street, wouldn't know the fuck she was. Hey. But that's about... That's like and maybe that's why she needs to have friends that look so good so that she can get in because we don't know who the fuck you are. Right. And let me just make this very clear. I'm not hating on Erica Banks's, you know, music and her career and all of her accolades and things she's accomplished. This in particular, you know, discussion just got my my skin boiling. Okay, my I, anything, every anything and everything inside of me is upset about Are your it because, gears grinding, huh? The it, ge- it grinds my gears. <laughs> this is what grinds my gears. Okay, because you have to watch what you say. You never know how people will take the things that come out of your mouth. It's just a glass house. It it's is just- a glass house, and the glass is broken now, bitch. <laughs> So, anyways, I got a story time for you because I want to know if you can, if you ever experienced it. I know you have. I just know you have something similar to the two. Okay. Okay. So the other day, I haven't had a, a one night stand in a very long time. Mm-hmm. It's given. I'm. What do we call a one night stand? Sex on the first night. Sex on the first night. Okay. But okay, I met him randomly. Okay. So I guess it was a date. The moment I laid eyes on him. So I was out in the club. I was in Boys Town. You know West Hollywood. Okay. Okay. And I was leaving the club with a couple of friends. And there's this white boy. I haven't had a white boy in a long time. Okay. He was giving Sometimes vanilla like swirl. Uh, yeah, it's okay. He was a little vanilla swirl. You know, he was really, really cute, handsome. Maybe woke now. He was woke. And he seemed bisexual. He said he was bisexual. So me and him started making out. I was super duper drunk. Usually I just don't be kissing people like that. But I was like, fuck it, come here. I haven't had sex in a long time. Let's make out. Then we met these other two knuckleheads and they was like, yo, we're going to have a house party. Y'all should come through. I haven't been at a house party in LA in a long time. Unless I really know you, I just don't do those no more. That but is I so LA. Way. I already met him. I watched my go to the house party with him. We put up to the house party. The people that said that they're having a house party didn't even answer like the, the door. So we were just outside looking stupid. He calls us a lift to his place. I'm like, oh, bitch, this is the moment I'm finna get some fucking dick. Okay. I was, you know, felt his dick a little bit. I said, okay, it's giving a little thick. You know, I can take it. I can take it. I didn't eat. So I went to the house. <laughs> I went to the house, bitch. And we went to his room. He was drunk as fuck, by the way. I was tipsy. One thing about me, I could drink a lot, but I can handle my liquor. It's never given destruction. So we go into his room. He's laying down on the bed. He starts to fall asleep. Fuck. Like this. I'm looking up. 
There's a roach crawling no, on No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. I ain't never been through this. Oh, That's goddamn crawling lie. Crawling on his arm, on his legs. I look on the floor. There's like a roach crawling on my shoe. Bitch, when I say I scooby dude and shaggy force run, I ran right out of there. I ran so fast, I felt like I saw a ghost, bitch. You saw three roaches? More than three. It was giving infested, infestation. When the lights turned on, and no, I saw no, that roach, no. Roaches all over the place. I've never been to a Caucasian home and saw a roach. <laughs> and anytime I've ever been to an African American home and saw a roach, bitch, if I see an ant, I gotta go. Okay, even recently, because in summertime, I've been seeing like little gnats in my um, apartment. You know about to be coming in. I oh, I got a little a trap just in case I got a garden now. Oh, hell no. I just, I hate that shit. So you never been to somebody's house where you was hooking up and you saw like a bug? Uh, you know what I mean? You never saw like a roach? A rat, bitch, you live in New York. I've let, yo, nobody believes me when I say that, by the way. Although I was with Alex, uh, who's my co, like we uh, co in the studio together, walking down the Lower East Side. I was wearing flip flops, crying about a nigga I'll never forget. And I said, What was that, a dog? And he said, What? And a fucking rat went over my feet. Shut up. Barefoot. And it was in the middle of the pandemic. And I only know this because I burst into the restaurant. And they were like, No, 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 we only serve outside. I was like, Please, somebody. They poured vodka on my leg. I was like, I need to sterilize. And I was crying. Uh, you are so <laughs> extra. And I know you really did this. Oh, you? I did. I was freaking Tell out. Me. He thought this shit was hilarious. I thought it was a fucking dog. That's how big it felt like the weight of a rat on your bare foot. I was like, Oh, anyway. Uh, no, I don't. I don't know. Maybe I can't go back in time. The only thing I do know is I've been in some filth, and I think it's because men just don't know how to take care of themselves. Again, not that I really like I fuck with dirty niggas, but back in the day, I used to just fuck a lot of drug dealers. I'm from Florida. It's just the thing down there. Okay, it was in that Florida water. It was, and the thing that really was crazy to me is like these niggas would be rich and hood rich, yes, <laughs> but like just in a club spending. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars come to their crib, and I'm like, "What is this? Why are we in a trap house?" Right. But you guys live here. They would have these luxury condos in Miami. I'm talking about floor to ceiling windows, wrap around balconies on the water, no furniture, hair, and them little curly ass people <laughs> hair. <about> to, <laughs> ugh, ugh. <laughs> that shit used to drive me up, but I probably used to still fuck because I was I, right doing your little crisscross. But a roach, thing. I couldn't do it. Okay. I, I, I told you I ran out of the house so quick. I was so disgusted. I went home. Before I even got in my house, I was just making sure there was nothing. I was butt naked, bitch, in my hallway, in my apartment. <laughs> I swear to God, I took off all my clothes, my shoes, my socks, my underwear, did the Harlem Shake, and went in my apartment, hopped straight in the shower, and prayed that one didn't come in in the middle Ooh, of the Oh, actually, you know what? Ooh, I'm, I am the roach culprit. There is a story. Not the roach culprit. I was in my apartment after a date. I met this girl on Field with a guy I was fucking at the time. I used to call him Jeeves because he was really field? smart. Field is like a threesome app. Thank and you. <laughs> so this was, oh, this might have been like five years ago. And uh, fucking this white boy, he was really tall, German, but his dick was fucking huge. Oh, my God. Oh, my. And we go on Field and we meet this girl and she was really cute. Met her in the Lower East Side because I always meet somebody by my apartment because if I want to fuck him, I'll take him upstairs. So we bring her upstairs and I had a balcony. And when the door was open, because we were smoking weed, and I was facing the door, the front door, and he was facing the balcony. And I remember seeing his face, and he he went like this. I said, are you okay? And he was like, shit, sorry, I need some water. He got up, got a napkin, went to the trash can. Anyway, we ended up fucking the girl. The second she leaves, the door was closed, and he was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. There was a huge roach flying around behind the both of you. And all I thought to myself was... I'm not going to get to fuck them if they see it. And I was like, you wouldn't have. I'd have ran out of my own house. Oh, my God. A flying roach. You know what? If it's a flying roach and it's just one of them, I'm not going to be as disgusted as if I saw a small a couple of small ones in your kitchen because that means that you have roach problems. No, a flying roach? Girl, if the window was open, you said y'all was on a balcony, bitch, it flew in. We were, but still. Because <laughs> let me tell you, I'm going to be fucking the whole time sitting there holding my legs up like, oh, my God. <laughs> Ugh. Can we stop talking about roaches? Okay, no more roach talk. Okay, so, so let's talk about something else. Okay. So you travel out the country a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And I love that for you, honey. Thank I you. I love it. I love it. I love a girl that can travel off of her own coin. Hey, honestly, like, I wouldn't be traveling off my. I'm telling you, I was. I'm going to Thailand for New Year's with my friends, right? And one of my homegirls like, damn, I wish I could afford some shit like that. I'm going to Miami for New Year's. I said, well, how much you spending? Because Miami for New Year's is expensive. She's like, well, the hotel's like $600 a night, but it's three of us that'll split it. We're going to stay for five nights. I was like, girl, I'm spending $70 a night at the W in Bangkok. Like, it's the same shit. 
Like seventy dollars, seventy dollars, because the the money exchange. Oh, but I thought their money was just as uh, even more. I thought Thailand. Oh, Thailand. Thailand. Tokyo is more expensive. Oh, Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Japan. Yeah. Okay. But like, I mean, even Japan was kind of affordable. Um, but like, no, nah, I think sometimes like people assume international travel is like something that's super luxe. Bro, I'm telling you, it's just the flight there. Once you get there, the shit be cheaper. I was in Europe for a month. I spent. Such little money on food, way less than I spend here. Nigga, I go to Katana, fucking Craig's, you just brought it, all that shit. I'm spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I don't do that shit in Paris. Let me find out you go to Craig's. I don't go like that. Okay, come, come you on. Know, I'm gonna be honest with you. That's when I go to Craig's, when I go to Craig's, it's actually with friends that are like famous. Okay, I go every. Why do famous people like going to Craig's? I, because it's just that place to go. Is it even that good? It's, it's not so to me. good. I've been going every Thursday since I was 21. I'm, Why? What's the Thursday 28 night? Yesterday. Thursday night is the litest night. That's where all the football players and basketball players go. I go with all my celebrity friends on Thursday nights, paparazzi outside. And you know what? They don't got to be celebs. So I go sometimes without the celebs. Craig is like my dad. Like, right? I have a real father. But Craig is like... So this restaurant we're talking about is really popular in LA. If you're in LA, go to Craig's and check it out. Very good. But he's like my father. Like, when I was 21, he gave me my first alcoholic beverage in LA. And ever since then, like, he just takes me under his wing. So when I'm in there, I'm like that VIP. I'm that nigga in Craig's. So when I go there, I love to bring people with me to Craig's. Why did he go with you? Come with me. Let's have a Chicken parm, a little champagne, or whatever you want, caviar. A chicken parm and caviar. Okay. Money lost, say shrimp and lobster tower. But not like that. That I will say. So I, the reason I brought up going with famous people, I had a point for that. Was not a flex. I swear. In New York, any famous nigga I know be like doing a little, you know, maybe a basement restaurant, shut some shit down today in L.A. They need to be at a Craig's. They need to be at a catch. Like you need to be seeing me, and I'm just like, got to call the horses, paparazzi. Whatever Hold that on, place let is. me tell them we're coming around the corner. That shit is hella weird, dog. Like, yeah. I also realized that it's kind of the culture of like being famous is a thing in its own, right? You have people that are famous because they have a craft, and then you have people that are famous and need to keep being famous to be relevant. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like. And I'm starting to see that and understand that. Like, I think that's why sometimes even from like a level that maybe we all fuck with, like a shade room moment, right? Like when you're watching the podcaster say something crazy about somebody because they know they're going to, their face is going to keep being shown. Like, I don't know. It's some weird shit. I, honestly, even though I do a TV show and a podcast that has made me popular, like I would rather 100% just work in production. But see, the thing is you do what you love, right? You guys That's what makes it easy. horrible decisions. And it was just easy because it's like, let's just talk about sex. Right. People love that. You guys became a household name. People can't stop recognizing y'all on the streets. You guys have sold out shows. I've been to one of them in LA, which is on Sex Sales. You guys got to go check out the show. That was a great episode. On a few Sex Sales. It was a great episode. Charlamagne to God. I mean, you really got it going on. And it's so amazing. You, I mean, two seasons. And, you know, we're manifesting a third. For sure. Which is so, so, so Some amazing. Some niggas better give me a third. They, they're going to give you a third. I'm, I'm on the elevator at Fuse. And I know it's not a billboard, but I keep bringing that shit up. Because in the middle of filming, and this was... It's funny because everybody has a moment. I'm sure you felt that probably with your show. Like, there's this one thing that clicks. Like, I've signed the contract for season two for Sex Sells. Didn't really think much of it. The production value went up. They gave me a producer from Real Housewives, like, that did the show, like, to build it. Like, everything changed. I was in L.A. You had your mama on the show. I did. And I was filming there one day. We were ordering lunch. And I grabbed the lunch. And the fucking door closed on the elevator. And I saw my face on it. And I just like cried and cried. And it's funny because the makeup artist was like, oh my God, we got to film. And I was like, yo, I know y'all niggas have me on the elevator. And they're laughing about it. Like, yo, we love you. And I'm, I just couldn't believe it. Like to me, there's like little things that like hit me. Um, at the Sex Sells premiere party I had here in LA, 300 people came. And for some reason, one girl I recognized from Zoom calls that we did during the pandemic. And I know for a fact that she lives like five hours outside of LA. And when I saw her face, I'm like, what are you doing here? And she was like, I drove to see you and meet you. And it just made me cry. I was like, damn. You never know the, I mean, which you withhold. You're so powerful. It's like, you, it's little things remind you. I know. I And I, I, I definitely get those moments sometimes. But you got to really cherish those moments. And the fact that you even cry about it is so, it's really good because it, you show emotion, which is so organic. No, I can't great. stop crying. I'm a little but bitch. It, that's fine. I could be a bitch too because I be crying too sometimes. But honestly, like sometimes when people recognize me, I tell my friend, I'm like, she don't know who I am. Like, I, I'm in denial about it because I, I don't expect that. 
You know what I mean? Because what I do, I love what I do. Like, you love what you do. You didn't expect you to blow up the way you have. You're a household name. You're a boss ass Okay, wait bitch. a minute. Y'all acting like I'm Beyonce, but... but Come on. Are we in your studio today? <laughs> but for real, like, we just don't That's know true. who's watching. Right. You never know. And actually, it's funny because I remember my ex told me... I'll never forget it. It was three years ago. There was a girl at a bar and... I, I'm ghetto. So I'm like, I see this bitch looking at me and I'm like, what the fuck is this whole problem? <laughs> it is, right. And he was like, she came up and was like, I'm so sorry to bother you, Easy. I just really love your show. And I said, why? I thought we were going to fight. And he told me like, stop thinking that nobody in the street uh, listens or that no one knows you or that you're not famous stop saying the word because you know what i say famous and i think beyonce but there's also a level of fame that my podcast has and he's like for some reason it don't click to you and it it really doesn't sometimes like i don't get it i've been fucked up and drunk i was crying on the street in new york and that oh this dude broke up with me i call him hospital dick i remember being on the stoop i remember where i was I heard about hospital dick oof it was so good i was outside of pianos it was on ludlow crying i just went there for the first time Oh, we did? Oh, I love pianos. Mm -hmm. Met a little nigga from the Bronx. Crying, 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 right? My homegirl's in front of me. I'm like, why did you want me? And this girl was like, Weezy, don't cry. <laughs> Wait. Bitch, who the fuck are you? Oh, my God. And I was like, damn, bitch, I really got to watch my shit. You got to watch your shit. You going to cry anyway. but Bro, I remember doing some, I did some molly out of a bag once and dipped my finger in it. And... The dude offered it to me and I did it. And I remember after this shit, he was like, yo, I just, my girl fucks with your shit. And I was like, hold on. I thought this was like a camaraderie drug thing. I didn't know you knew me, nigga. You got to watch what you do. Yeah, everybody know you. They could have killed me. What if it was a bitch that didn't fuck with me? And here I am just like, la di da Look, the whore hive is strong now. I'm sure they come and buzz a bitch. They, they did. They will. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Well, congratulations to Thank everything you. that you're doing. I always ask on every episode. I'm one of those people. I just come in when I do this podcast. I don't. I don't have a script. I don't just sit here and read things, bitch. I just go with the top of my head. I heard. So, I've heard some compliments about you. I was. Uh, I was talking to Clara <coughs> today, and I uh, asked her if she was going to do the session. She's like, "No, it's Danny." But I've watched. You know, I've watched him do his show, and he's really good. He just, like, sneaks up his questions. He doesn't really need an outline. But it's funny, because I, I can see that you have one, but you don't need to, like, be like, so tell me about the first time that... Girl, we're not doing all that shit. Fuck I that hate shit. that shit. Me too. Um, so, and I don't need notes. I'm a Virgo, baby. I, and I know everything about you. I already did my... Also, notes, you kind of need if notes person is good. boring. I see sometimes you do need notes because you Boring do... is when I need notes. Yes. And it's never given boring. Right. And I'm honored to have this beautiful, oh. gorgeous queen <laughs> on my podcast. And I can't wait till Mandy come to LA so I can have her on here too. For real. But I'm so excited to even have you on here because I really be sitting at home watching horrible decisions and I be on Fuse. I support my girl. So ah! when, I when I heard about you and you guys' podcast- What episode have you liked? Bitch, all of them. Especially the one with the city girls. That was one of my favorite. Oh, and the girl with the wheelchair, too. Oh, she was best. Oh, I loved her. I hated the city girls episode, and I and love the, the city girls. The one with the big boobs. The the girl, she was... Uh, with the arm? Yes. I love. Can I be arm. honest with you, I which is sit on crazy? It. First of all, I am not an ableist. Our disabled episodes are the best. They're the best ones? For some, the blind nigga, the girl with one arm, the wheelchair, bitch. That's my bitch, <laughs> by the way. And it's funny because... There was a moment where she was talking about how I couldn't suck dick. And I said, bitch, somebody got to roll this hoe out of here. And I yeah. was like, well, you know what? I'm not an ableist. If you were walking, bitch, I'd have said, bitch, walk your ass out of here. <laughs> so, fuck. But I, I really like having disabled people on Horrible because it's the, it's all about sex lives, right? right? People's sex lives and horrible decisions. But disabilities are such an interesting thing because we meet so many people that have them. But yet, we don't necessarily know how they're having sex. So... I really like learning about that shit. Like, I don't see why we shouldn't talk about that more. I'd love to have someone with that has cerebral palsy on. Like, I want to know why. Why you laugh? You have a story? Go ahead. Oh no, no, maybe please. I shouldn't even be talking about this. Why? <laughs> why are so, you ashamed? It is so bad. It's just so bad. No, it's not. Oh my god. So I don't know what kind of fetishes I have. I'm a very weird individual, and I love me in and out. Now you said you fetishize. Me. Come on. So, one of my fetishes, okay, so I like I like midgets. Don't give me, like, I'm, I'm sorry, let me not say, I'm gonna have to edit that out, bitch. I, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, small people. <laughs> Just correct yourself, it's good enough. I got fetishes and I love small people, you know, like the little small people. I small? always wanted, bitch, I don't care if you the size of my kneecap. Okay. I want you to dominate this asshole. I wanted to always fuck 
a small person. Like, if you're a small person and you're watching this podcast, please email me. The email is down in the description Not box. Not call me. But- Let's talk. Because I really want to be... It's something about a shorter man with a big dick and all those muscles, and he just comes and just dominates me. I've Not always the- wanted it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So please come on and fuck with me because I'm definitely looking for you. So we were supposed positive. to have a small person on. That bitch didn't show up because she was getting her makeup done and wanted us to wait an hour and a half. And also Mandy had just left the sex club and was coming down <laughs> off Molly. And I was like, I ain't waiting on this hoe. And then I was realizing, <laughs> I was like cussing her out and like talking all this shit. And we were doing BTS at the time. And I was like, well, maybe I should talk shit because she's small. Fuck that. I don't give a fuck if that hoe three feet. Bitch, you should have been here. She may not have been one of them little women from Little Women L.A. What was she from? I know she was on one of them shows. She No, she was on a little person show. Yeah, because they be doing the most. I know. Hold on. Her name started with a T. Fuck that now bitch, bro. you about to call her out. I was really... Yo, I've never... Okay, go ahead. I've never... People be late, but like, you wanted me to wait an hour and a half. And here's the thing, too. We also pay for studio time, right? Come so on it's now. like... I are you serious? Like, what do you think this is? And then somebody else has a slot. Like, that late shit ain't cool, bro. Like, I really don't disrespect people with their podcast and like lateness because I really I know what it's like to. But if you're more than like 15 minutes late, it's like okay. 15 I, no, minutes. I agree. There's a great. Like period. you have. Look, I was a little late today. Look, I'm calling. No, myself but you out. weren't that late. I was like four minutes late, but still, you got somewhere. You got to be after here. So, but no, late there's late. a there's a quote unquote late grace period. I believe that. At a restaurant, it's 15 minutes. That's why I said 15 minutes. That's what I'm saying. Just going by the books. That hoe, we called her and was like, hey, are you coming up? And she was <laughs> like, oh. Oh, no, no. Her assistant, excuse me, said, she's just getting her makeup done right now. Is it like, can you guys do like 4 o'clock? It was like 2, two, two o'clock, 2.30. And I was like. What time was the call time? 2. We were we called her late. So it's 2.30 and she's getting her makeup done. Can we do a 4 o'clock? What the fuck do you think this Bitch, is? Bitch, you were supposed to be here too. Oh, yeah. I would have been livid. I don't like that shit. But I'm going to be real with you, though. When people, as many famous people that come on our podcast, they be prompt. They be on time. So, bitch, cut it out, ho. No. Now your little ass ain't coming on here. I hope that makeup was worth it, bitch. And where would you do it after that? She got OnlyFans. What the fuck is that whole name? Um, bitch. I ain't subscribe. I you can come lie. on now if you want to, though, because I'm going to bring it up. Right, bring it up. Address her. So I got a couple of people coming on my podcast. I got there's a few list. people I talk shit about that I would like also want to interview. Right, like and I talk shit about. Come on my podcast if if you really are offended by the conversation we had today, which I'm sure you are. That's okay, babe. It's no, it's no hate. It's all love here. You can still come on this podcast and we could talk about it. So the I can get in that ass in person. I could never interview is Fresh and Fit. Fresh and Fit. Just the go. dudes that said black women were night riders and Shaniquas and oh and yeah, the hell no, no. them no. You... But everyone else no. I like I talk a lot of shit about Britney Renner because I don't really understand her. Like I feel like her uh, also, yeah. Who you know who I want to interview? I want to interview Stacey Dash and Stacey Dash. If you're listening to this, you're very. I want you on this podcast. Okay. Do you think she knows the Just Queen of England? Dad. Um, I don't think she, she's probably at the funeral. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> the fuck that video of her saying. I just found out DMX passed. I was like, bro, I had to Google when the video came out. You watched SpongeBob? Yeah. Ten hours later, <laughs> bitch. You late ass hoe. That's why I want to. The her, other her, thing her. about Stacey Dash that I would want to know about. So, like, on some deep shit, Dion was like the pinnacle of, to me, like, Black Valley girl. And, like, I loved her. Like, a lot of my friends be saying I be on white girl shit because I like house music or. I love. Oh, I forgot to mention. I, I put that in my notes, but I ain't read notes. <laughs> I love that you love house music. I Thank do. you. I could kiss the 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 hem of your garment, <laughs> yeah. darling. I love house music, and I love you know black coffee. Oh, I, yeah. He's my favorite. I just love, the, and I'll be shuffling too. Okay, you shuffle. Yeah, oh my god, I used to be rave girl. But that's the thing, though. Like, you know, it's been shit that I've been shamed for. So when I think about Dion, I just remember like she was giving black girl, but also giving Valley girl, and I loved that about her. So I would want to know, like, do you think your clueless character introduced you into being this fucking like low key anti black? Like, do you feel like? Because you were the only black girl, like, you had to conform, and now you had to conform? Like, I don't get it. Like, what the fuck happened to Stacey Dash, dog? I masturbated to her. Wait. Back in the day. To what? A picture? Oh, my God. I wanted to fuck Stacey Dash. Really? Did you, Danny? Everybody did. You? What's your sign? I forgot. Pisces. Okay, I'm a Virgo, so you know. What that got to do with the- Let me tell you something, uh, Pisces. Stacey Dash was fine. I love a Pisces, and let me tell you why. 
Okay. Okay. Some of the best sex is with Pisces because you guys love to please. Yeah. You guys, you guys are so like y'all put y'all soul in that shit. So I, I, I do. And I understand. It's like Big Mama's cooking, but I'm not with judging you for wanting to fuck Stacey Dash because there's somebody a big celebrity I want to fuck too, but I'm not gonna say his name. Why not? Who is it? Oh, baby. You might meet him. You one really want to know? You know what? I'll say it. I want to fuck the president, Joe Biden. It's something about a white. You know what, Joe? If you watching this, baby, I would love to come to the White House. You know, we could do a little under the desk. I love an older white man in a business suit that's a boss. I mean, he's the president of the I, fucking United States. I, I, and I, I don't want be Trump, honest with but you, Joe Biden. Yes, this is not shocking to me because my best friend Vinny, who is also tour manager for Horrible, he is obsessed with older white men, and it is. <laughs> Sick. He be <laughs> bro. We did this fucking uh, thing on sex cells where we had to do a clone of Willie. So basically, you clone your dick and it turns into a dildo. But your dick has to be hard during the mold. So he was mixing it up in the other room while I'm talking to him, and I started. I said, "What do you want me to do? You want me to give you a moan?" He was like, "No, say somebody I'd want to fuck." And he was literally screaming, "Sean Connery, nursing home." No bitch. <laughs> to, to, to stay hard. And he was hard. What is it about the old white man? Uh, Does it feel like... You know what? It just... He has got to be... He, let me just make this very clear. He has to be rich. A uh, CEO. Okay. It turns me on when a man is older, generous, and has some type of swag to him. Like some type of authority. I love it. What you is know, this? You have a sugar baby for about an older man that's Oh, generous. baby, I have a sugar daddy, but we don't even have to. We don't have sex at all. We don't even talk. Where'd you meet him? We don't talk on the phone. Okay, so men, boys, I already DM'd you guys. You guys need to sponsor me. I'm the only African-American gay man on YouTube who talks about how to get a sugar daddy. YouTube it. I'm the only one on YouTube. I'm that nigga on YouTube. So, bitch. And my men, boys video went viral and sugar babies around the globe have sugar daddies because they listen to my mint boys video and they go in yes so my sugar daddy called me one day and he was like this is before he became oh we gotta have you on horrible to talk about the beach okay we're gonna talk about this story you guys gotta uh subscribe to horrible decisions to talk about this and you'll know when the episode comes up but we're not gonna talk about right now just know that the story is grand and bitch he my sugar daddy got in my ass yesterday the amount of money that he not said, it he gives me a year oh no it's not in there oh bitch no i ain't going nowhere and neither is he Please. This no, no, you said this he this got in dead. my ass yesterday. And I said, this is well, not no, he, in it. Well, not in it. No, not that. But he like, <laughs> got on my shit because the amount of money he gives me a year, he was like, this is your salary from me. And I'm like, well, this is your death to his part. It's only going to go up higher, babe. <laughs> Even when I become a millionaire, I still want your money. Why not just spend mine? You know, that's what they're for. But we'll get into that. But Okay, taking I money from fun. old men, though, is kind of yes. hot. So, like, I like it. I got an apartment before I even fucked my sugar daddy, right? I, but, like, do you have one now? Not so, through him, but years ago when I moved to New York, um, and he was very wealthy, like private jet type wealthy. And I remember when he got my apartment, it was like six grand a month, two bedroom, midtown. And everybody was like, I can't believe you're not fucking him. And I ended up fucking him. Give me a high five. Excuse me. At the end, That's because fine. it was making me. How was, oh, God. Something about him and the money. Yes. And also, like, he would take me to, like, places and, like, niggas would be looking at me. And I just don't know why he was turning me on. It was so sick. I'm a sick beach. I don't. I remember the first time I wanted to suck his dick. We were at STK and there was a bunch of niggas at the table next to us. No, catch. And Jeezy was at the table. And I remember coming over to him and I was like, oh, my God, I love this rapper. And I'm telling the sugar daddy. And he was like, what do you, like, why don't you go say hi? And I remember speaking to Jeezy and he looked at me like, you know, like, oh, okay, like, thank you, appreciate you. And his friends looked at me when I walked back to the table, like, what the fuck's she doing with this old white nigga? And I remember thinking, like, you know I'm paid. And it made me feel hotter. It made me feel sexier. Like, yes, I am. Yes, he is my daddy. Not that kind, but you know. And it was just something about it. When we would go shopping and, like, people would know... Like, they know I'm too hot for you. Did it kind of change you in a way, not in a bad way, but more like financially? Like, when you look at money and your value as a woman when it comes to men um, offering you things like that, it, does it change you, like, more so where you're like, I know my worth. I'm not going to settle for that when I'm getting this. Uh, yeah, I would say yes and no. So I make jokes about fucking a lot of broke niggas, and I don't mean they're necessarily, like, super broke. Broke niggas like, the best dick. Let's make it they very do clear. Kind of okay. Oh, God. No one is texting me right now because he got nothing else to do. But... <laughs> 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 but but here's the thing. Gotta... Actually, so I just had this conversation with Brett Fias. We went out 
this weekend with a bunch of friends, have fun. And he was joking because I got the bottles at the table. And he was like, this bitch is crazy. Like, you just love flexing. Da, 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 da. Rich niggas don't get It turns me shit. on. I'm gay. But when I see a female by a table. I love it. I'm rock hard, bitch. Well, now, a lot of people would say, I'm stupid for that, right? And of course, like, he's just like, yo, let me get it. And I'm like, but of course, like. You know, he's my my friend. I know he's always getting them. I'm like, bro, let me... I actually do take pleasure in doing things for friends. But... Uh, it's different when it's a friend, though. Yeah. And one of the things he said was like, uh, he, I don't know why you like fucking with these broken niggas. <clears throat> like, it's a power thing. And I was like, no. For me, obviously, I want to date somebody that has money that can keep up with me. But sometimes niggas with money just act like they're a little too cool. Or they have so many girls on their dick that they're not giving me as much attention. Whereas someone in the middle does value me more like their access to women's different right for example you go on a date with a guy that's super wealthy women are eclipsing men especially black black women yeah uh, you know mm -hmm. amazing jobs and entrepreneurship and all of that yeah. so these niggas ain't used to bitches that got bread or that are beautiful and fucking got jobs and doing shit like they're used to this shit which is why their standards are higher right these women because they know they deserve better when niggas in the middle or kind of broke, they're like, damn, my girl lit. She got a podcast. She got a podcast studio and shit. They gonna hype you up. <laughs> and then they gonna they gonna fuck you. They gonna hold you after. They gonna I mean, make like, sure, yeah, they gonna make sure you know like this dick is good, babe. Like oh, this dick is good. Yo, the dude that I just fucked, he's an artist. And do tell. <laughs> <laughs> so the sex was so phenomenal. And I remember like after, so I needed a heating pad. Nacho toes curling thinking about it, bitch. Oh, my God, stop. <laughs> I got to show you what he looked like. He's so fine. I got to see this. The dick was so good that, like, I don't even want him to know how good it is because I want I don't want him to know the power that he has. But it was so fucking good. You sound like my best friend. He fucked the shit out of me. And after he fucked me so hard, don't he look bad? Oh, let me see. Let me zoom in again. Thank you. Oh, it was so thick. You know I zoomed right into the boge. Ooh! Not him wearing leather pants like me. Oh, I love a man with tattoos on their neck. I lick oh, every night. Oh! And on the hands. He had a tattoo right by his dick. Oh! oh wow. Yeah, he fine. Okay. Right. You did so, that. Anyway, after we fucked, I was in so much pain because we fucked for two hours that I needed a heating pad, right? And <laughs> I was like, yo, I know you be fucking these little young bitches. I'm it's not ready. a heating pad. I swear to God, I was cramping. I think he fucked. He like hit my uterus or something. But it's all right because okay. I made it work. Okay. But, um, you know, nothing bad. Not day you going to be in a wheelchair next. Look at me. I remember how the dick <laughs> felt. So now I'm doing this. So I shamelessly grabbed this heating pad, right? So I got the heating pad and we laughing about it. And I was like. He said, I don't think this ever happened to me before. I was like, bro, you you were doing a lot. And he was like, honestly, I felt the pressure. And I was like, <laughs> why did he feel the pressure? Is it one, because I'm a sex podcaster? Is it two, because... Like, he made a comment about me being industry. And I was like, oh. what is it? Is he thinking, like, I got to show out for this bitch? Like, what was it? It's probably that. Because from your podcast and what you talk about, Ugh. you give, like... They got to really be ready to... Oh, I asked him if I could talk about it. Literally. Next day, yeah. I'm like, hey, just want to make sure like we're good with consent right now. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I've been dreaming about that dick. I don't want to say nothing about it to him. I'm just being chill. Because, look, I know what it's like when someone's too thirsty for you. But, unfortunately, I haven't really been fucking that much lately. And that dick was so good. That's why I didn't mind the heating pad and the fucking pain I was in. I had to go to the bathroom. And, like, literally, I was scared my fucking ovary was going to fall out in the toilet. I can't. I so felt he was like, deep. I mean, he was motherfucking in the ocean. Bro. Swimming. And you know what's crazy? I said to him later, I was like, this is how, because he was like, are you okay? Because I mean, he was a little worried. I took an ibuprofen and had to eat Are you back. a squirter? Sometimes. Did he make you squirt? No. But he was about to, but I was scared I was going to pee on him. Because <laughs> I don't know which <laughs> one's coming. And I was like, damn, this is also Let my bed. Let foul, bitch. It's my bed. Oh, it's your bed. Okay, okay, okay. But he he said, um, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. I um. I said, I, I got to say, like, in the middle of it, I knew I was in pain, but I liked how much it hurt. And I was like, this is nasty. Didn't Rihanna say that? I love the way it burns. Did she say burns or lie? <laughs> burns. She, didn't she say, I love the way you burn? I love the way it burns. Did she not say that? I don't think that was it, babe. Okay. <laughs> I'm a little, you know. I didn't say it burned, okay? No, it's not about burn. She liked the pain. Like, she liked the pain of it. Oh, my God. Like, that shit was hurting. Because I remember he kept saying, are you okay? And I was like, yeah. So, 
So you was like, it's giving like giving birth type of like. Oh, thing. bro. Okay. Also, you know when I know a dick is big when they put it in and ask if you okay at first. Oh, I love it. Give me a checkup. <laughs> 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 Not a check up. Yeah, I'm okay. Bitch, it's time to check out. Ooh. I got one more question for my girl right here. Okay. And I just love you. Love you too. Um, <laughs> What grinds your gears, darling? What grinds my gears? I'm going to wait till you say it and then I'm going to drink my drink because I'm not about to spit it out. I would say inconsistency grinds my gears. <laughs> I will tell you, tell you why. I actually think you can be honest about how inconsistent you are, and that's enough for me. Like, I think that sometimes, and this is friends, this is colleagues, this is lovers. I'm talking about all of them. In general. Inconsistency is really, really a difficult thing because I know my faults. Like, I'm a really bad texter. And one of my friends had to recently tell me, he was like, bitch, you really be hurting my feelings when you don't text me back. I'm like, damn, I wish you would just call me because sometimes I, I don't look at my phone and then I think about texting you and I don't. And I wish I was a better friend that I'm really bad at that. Please remind me when I need to be more um, thoughtful and like not be more thoughtful. Uh, remind, let me know when you need attention from me and I'll take it serious. I'll be more vulnerable. Yeah. Like, don't send me a meme and think because I didn't reply, I don't fuck with you. Um, but inconsistency as far as like dating... My largest issue is availability. I don't have a lot of it, so I don't have a lot of time to waste. And I think that when men aren't really consistent in making sure they're keeping up with me, but expect to be fucking me and having some access to me, that's an issue for me. Well, I know you're not a science type of girl, but this is what I go back to be, you being a Pisces. Pisces are very well thought. They make time for the people they want. They give 110% at all times. So when they're not getting that reciprocated, you guys are turned off. And you guys also will let you know, let people know how you feel because you guys are so passionate about the things that you love, the things that you like, your friends. You guys will give the last. So yeah, it's when people are not reciprocating that, you guys don't appreciate it and it will turn you off. So I can yes, see I why know. inconsistency And I don't mean you got to be on my dick, that, but it's just like, I don't like How about communicate? Yeah. And then be consistent with the communication because that's my problem. That's what grinds my gears too, bitch. Yeah. I hate when somebody is not consistent. I can text you. In the, if I text you in the morning, just know every morning I'm going to text you. And I'm not saying you have to send me a good morning text every fucking morning, but I, that's me. So the same Jacob you get today is the same Jacob you're going to get for fucking ever. Right. So when you're not giving me that consistency back, it's a fucking turn off. And from a work perspective, like something that's grinding my gears recently, like we have a client <coughs> at WTF in New York that spent a lot of money. I would even say throughout the year they've spent six figures. So they've spent a lot of money. And I'm not saying I'm not grateful Who for they? it. It's just a big company that oh, like okay. will send people to us. They recently, um, I was I was sending an invoice and they basically told me, because I double emailed within two weeks, by the way. That and, and it's just a standard thing. It's well, a reminder. Well, double email, that's two weeks. I mean, that's yeah. pretty basic. I mean, pretty regular. She called me on the phone, the woman that works there, and she was like, and they're white, so I feel like they'll never hear this. Um, <laughs> she was like, hey, actually, I don't really care if she hears this because I had to check her. She was like, hey, like, I saw your email the first time. And it's just like, we've been super busy here. Like, we're doing a reorg. Like, we'll get to it. Like, clearly, you know. Not her having to check you about the double email because you've taken two weeks to double respond. Basically. I said, what's your name again? Because I really need to knock her down a page. It's time for Mandy to be corporate. <laughs> corporate. I said, I said listen. Yeah. Uh, I'm a small business. And granted, while I appreciate yours, I don't think that it's good etiquette at all to just leave invoices unpaid. Sure, you've paid in the past. I'm but sorry. You're... Boss, did you just say you're a, sm a small business? I am a small business. Oh, baby. We don't man ever manifest small business. Oh. This is big, huge corporate business right Fine. here. Fine, I'm an S-corp ho. And basically what I'm saying to you is, I go. don't give a goddamn fuck if this is a double email you used to pay. Because she basically implied the company's huge. She was like, you know, like, we're clearly good for it. Like, we'll get to it. And I was like, that doesn't work for us at all. Yeah. Like, my employees are now paid out from my pocket because you didn't get to it. Two weeks is too long. Two weeks is way too long. Right. Not to mention... Any other person that books with WTF, including the person that's not a million-dollar business, is paying before they book. Because of this company and the way they're structured, we have to invoice them later, which I get it. They do payroll. They do some kind of payment shit. You're not going to do me like that. I said, so we're going to have to do another course of action. Unfortunately, I'm now unable to send you invoices anymore because if you can't honor them in the time frame in which you book, then 
I no longer can do this favor for you by emailing and invoicing you. So you'll now need to be booking like a regular client with a credit card. She was like, oh, well, I'll have to talk to Tiana, who's the studio manager. I said, oh, no, you're going to talk to Wheezy? I ain't get that whole my name. Fuck the gila. You talking to me, ho? This is what I see. Hello. So anyway, she then told me that there are a bunch of podcast studios in New York. I said, oh, I understand. And you've been coming to us for a year for a reason. Did you not see them when you looked me up? You know about what's the fuck media studios? There's and a lot of podcasts in New York. Wasn't she back is it the day? next day? Hello? Inconsistency with people really cries my gears. Right, and I really do feel disrespected. Like, that to me was a, an inconsistency. Right? And that's why my quote to everybody in this fucking world is, what you want, somebody else will, bitch. Yeah. Somebody else will. Set your boundaries. Right. Know your value. And that's what you do. And that's why you put your, your foot down, both feet down. Okay? It's definitely giving Ten big, toes big down, energy. The toes that he wanted in his mouth. You can have it. <laughs> good. I wanted to talk about something else really, really quick because you just recently said, and I totally agree. And my good friend is Tori Hart. Shout out to Tori Hart. I fucking love you, bitch. But she was saying that a long time ago, we were at a dinner table with all my friends. And she was saying how short men have big dicks. And she was like laughing about it. She's like, short men, they short, but they got big dicks. You just said that, right? They do. Yes, the hell they do. Because recently I fucked a short man in I don't New know York. if the thicker the blood goes down. I don't, I don't know what it was, but it was definitely giving a good girth. When I was in New York and I went to pianos, oh, bitch, he played the piano all right, bitch. <laughs> I met this short ass nigga 5'2. I'm 6'1, by five the way. 5'2? Two? 5'2. Two. And I looked down at him like, Monty, what the fuck you want? But he wants <laughs> you. <laughs> Don't go chasing waterfalls. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I was wet. My asshole, bitch, I don't even got a pussy, but my asshole was wet, bitch. When I tell you, we went back to the Bronx to his apartment with motherfucking people outside playing fucking uh, all that uh, reggae and shit. Bitch, he fucked the shit out of me. He was so short, but it turned me on. It kind of reminded me of The small my, person you want? Oh. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of like my fetish for the you know, small people. So I don't really it was fuck so good. with short niggas because it just, I have a weird complex, but I will say the ones that I've had were huge. huge what about huge. the skinny nigga theory? Uh, they gotta have meat somewhere. Hold on, let me think of the biggest dicks I've ever seen. Hospital dick was lean. He was, was he a skinny? He was a skinny nigga. The nigga I just fucked? Oh, he was a skinny nigga. Was he skinny? Was that a skinny nigga based on that picture? A bony. You need to take him home to mama to get some food. That's what it's giving. But he cute though. He don't look sick, but he looks very skinny. Oh my God, it's true. It is true. So it was giving girth? Was it thick? This one? Yeah. Oh, let me just Was it giving baton, bitch? So I did slap it on my face. Okay. And I remember when I did it, he looked at me and I was like, oh, did I get too nasty on the first try? Like, you, know, you got <laughs> you to inch it. You know what I'm saying? I'm a good person, but also I do want your dick slapped in my face. You be like, talking about how you could sex some good dick. Listen, do you know what was crazy? So we fucked for two hours, right? And I was like, yo, you can't come over here and fuck me for no two hours again. Like, I want to fuck you again, but I don't want no heat and pad shit. He's like, honestly, it was your head. And he was like, like, I was... I could like stay in the game because the head, like I just kind of was like, ooh, like I would take breaks and wanted to take the condom off again to get my dick sucked because the head was good. You, and you know what that made me feel? You probably be crying when you be sucking dick. I do, <laughs> but here's the problem: is my pussy not good enough? Why does everybody compliment my head? Baby, because it's just you just talented with your mouth. Your pussy does a job. Too, I work really hard to there. suck dick. One, gay niggas taught me how to suck dick, so Come I feel on. like that's why I'm so good. And two, I just really. Love sucking dick. Y'all watch sex sales. Just watch sex sales. When and you then love also what watch, you do. Yeah. Go to a live show. Because when I was at that live show, not only did I have these bitch bent over on the fucking floor, I never was behind a girl like that. And even though I had on some, some pants, I was just like, what the fuck? Am I really in? I didn't even do the position right, by the way. They were teaching me about positions I didn't even know about. This bitch is elite. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is that? Well, I'm not, because now I'm a fucking heating pad, ho. <laughs> well, it's okay. That means you got a good working out. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Every time I cough, I I'm still feel it. And it was a week ago. <laughs> you said what? When I cough, I still feel it. Oh, you still feel it? You ever cough and you still feel it? Or the lube come out? Yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. You know people do not know about this shit. They don't, but you do. I love that you got gay friends because, bitch, you know. I know where You know the much. fact that we ain't got to eat. You know everything about it. Matter of fact, I would love to be in a sex club with you. When I come to New York, take me to a Mandy good sex goes club. Because I go to bath houses know. in L.A. all the time. I don't like sex clubs. I go to Flex. Some of the ones that I named on y'all episode where y'all was giving people the tea about the pocket. Oh, yeah. I, I know about a lot of those. So I was like, okay, cool. So they know what they talk about. Yeah, you have whole energy. I bet you do. I, I do. But you know what? I also have a rich nigga, boss ass. I want a nigga energy. I want a boyfriend, but we're going to talk about that later on. 
because we ain't got much time. But before I get off, I just want to shout out to my good friend Money Long. Her new album, Public Displays of Affection, is releasing on September 23rd. You guys, make sure you guys go download that album. It's going to be absolutely amazing. That bitch put her foot, neck, and whole body in it. Shout okay? out to Money Long. Shout out to Money Long. Money's long. And you know, I like some long other shit. I love the way she spells it. Wheezy, what the fuck? Baby came into the building today. I'm grateful and so thankful. Thank you for having that me. That you was like, bitch, what am I coming on the podcast? Well, today is the day this of is salvation. This first guest spot in my studio. Yes. And you're one of my, well, I'm not going to, I love everybody else that come on podcast. You're one of my favorite guests so far. This was just, so, I want to keep going for another two hours. But yeah, I can't. invite me back. Yes, I'm definitely going to invite you guys we'll back. we crossover. Let people know where they can follow my girl. You can find me every Monday on Horrible Decisions. You can watch, um, there's two seasons of Sex Sells on Fuse. I'm trying to think of what else I do. Come to WTF Media in New York or LA. I also do another podcast for fact's sake. It's Patreon only, but it's really fun. Um, that's where I have my mixed viewers. Ooh, it's not as negro ish. <laughs> not negro ish. She tried negro -ish. it. Negro ish. Oh, you guys. So, MTV's Date My Playlist just aired yes, on September that's her 15th with, my co -host. with her co host, Mandy B. You guys check out Mandy B. She's, she hosted the show on MTV. That's where we met and had a connection, and I learned about the podcast. I can't wait to see your episode. Uh, bitch, it's the best episode of the season. I Mandy bet. will tell you, it's the eighth episode in this given grand fucking finale. MTV, even, you know, we're going to work on some other stuff in the future. But what I can say is that the episode is out every Thursday. There's new episodes. We're on episode two starting this Thursday. You guys go check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Grinding Jacob's Gears. You can watch on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and TikTok Beach. I love you guys so much. Until next time, darling. Had a whole nother life. I'm falling for your lies, but last night everything changed. Another.